Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. Thanks everyone um, for yesterday's meeting and we're going to go ahead and get started with our uh, meeting this evening. I'm looking for the assistant city manager or the city clerk for that matter um, to do a quick roll call for this meeting. It's a continuation from yesterday's meeting. Uh, so we're going to continue with 4D on the agenda, um, section three. Okay. our brainstorm that we started um, but I just wanted to make sure I'm pretty sure we have to take roll before we start even if it's continuation but I'm not absolutely sure assistant manager are you here? yeah that would be appropriate and it looks okay. like we have um, uh, Reverend uh, Angela Brown over in attendees can we make sure she's over on the panelist side please I'm here Thank you for that. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and um, Ms. Perez, are you here or Ms. Miguel? I'm, I'm here, Sally Perez. All right, Ms. Perez, can you start roll call for me, please? Yes, I will. Uh, Member Bailey. Member Bailey. He's here. OK. I see. Um, Okay. Member Brown? Present. And Member Camarillo is excused, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Member Chamberlain? Present. Member Chandler? Okay. Uh, Member Cole? Present. Member Davis? Present. Madam Chair Day Rodriguez? Here. Member Herb? Here. Member Fry, Here, and I was here last night. I just missed roll call. Uh, thank you. Um, Vice Chair Gonzalez? He's here. Uh, Member Graham? Uh, she's excused. Member Grajeda? <laughs> Member Grant? Member Harper. Member Katz Lacabe. Standing back and standing by. Member Kim Eubanks. Member Lum. Here. Yeah. Member McFarland. Here. Member Magayon. Here. Member Miranda. Here. Member Offenberg. Here. Member Prola. He's here. <clears throat> Member Reynas. Here. Member Robertson. Here. Present. Member Schaefer. Here. Member Sheridan. Present. Member Wong. Present. Uh, city Thank clerk, Serlene Grant is here. Thank you very much. City clerk, Cynthia Chandler is here too. Thank you very much. Ms. Member Gonzalez, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Thank you. So, this meeting is being held in accordance with the State Emergency Services Act, the governor's emergency declaration related to COVID-19 and the governor's executive order in 2920 issued on March 17, 2020, to allow attendance by members of the Community Advisory Budget Task Force by teleconference, video conference, or both. If you have joined today's meeting remotely from a PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or Android device, and you do not wish for your name to appear on the screen, then use the drop-down menu and click on Rename to rename yourself to be anonymous. If you have joined the meeting by phone and want to comment during the public comment portion of the agenda, please press star nine and we will select you from the meeting queue with public comments is opened. Please note your phone number will appear on the screen unless you first dial star six seven before dialing the number to call into the meeting. This concludes my announcements. Thank you, Ms. Perez. And today's meeting is a little different in the context of we're not going to, since we're continuing the agenda, we don't necessarily have public comment when you continue a meeting like this. I know we're gonna have uh, communicated through uh, email 
public comment that was submitted, but in the context of people calling in and raising their hand, it's a little different tonight because it's a continuation of last night's meeting. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And can you do me a quick favor, Ms. Perez? Can you just run down to his absent? Because I wanna make sure that we have an accurate, who you have marked as absent. Um, I have Patrick Rajeda. Um, member Harper, member Kim Eubanks, um, I have uh, member Graham excused and member Camarillo excused. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. So we're going to start, um, continue our conversation with 4D3 and we're going to have our vice chair um, Gonzalez um, facilitate the meeting portion tonight. So I'm going to give the floor to Vice Chair Gonzalez. So yeah, in the spirit of what we did last night, which I think both the chair and I believe was very effective. It was wonderful to hear so many people contributing. We'd like to continue through that same process to just have folks volunteer and continue through each member so that you can have an opportunity to share your thoughts on the, the prioritizations, potential increases, decreases, and ideally beginning with those that did not speak last time. And then as we work through everybody, then coming back up to the top. I did not keep track of who spoke last time. Some of those hands that I see right now, I know did speak. So without looking through my notes, my preference is that you self, self moderate and make sure that those that did not speak last time get a chance to speak first, and then uh, we'll circle back around. We do intend to take a break, as has become our habit, after the end of the first hour and at the end of the second hour. So without further ado, I am um, going to... Go ahead. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, would you like me to share my screen and you can see, and I can type as people are talking, or do you want to... That would be helpful. Just the continuation of what we did last night would be very useful. And Vice Chair, um, if I can just add really quickly, the list of people who have their hand raised, Member Brown, Member uh -huh. Robertson, and Member Cole um, did not speak last night. So again, Member Robertson, Member Brown, and Member Cole. Thank you. Now there's the Zoom. Okay, let me get my uh, participant list back up. And <clears throat> with that in mind, uh, let's just start with Ms. Robertson. Member Robert. Okay. Um, I would just like to share my thoughts on what I think the priorities should be uh, towards uh, working on the budget. Um, I would say that the plan for another pool should be put on the back burner for the future. We have pools currently in the city and, and very good ones. I would say um, Farley should be put prioritized and the Boys and Girls Club. Um, I, would, I would like to share that I work for the County Public Works and we some years ago created a one-stop shop for permits and fire and all the things that people need when they're doing renovations on their home. So I don't know if that's something we do in the city, but it's been very effective in one, um, giving good service to the community and preventing them from having to go to numerous places. And then with the onset of COVID, we have really streamlined our technology and been able to do so much more for people without them having to physically come into the building. And I'm sure it's something that we're not going to revert back to the old ways. It's been, so um, looking at technology and how to do things smarter and better should be a priority within our budget. Um, and then because I do have a mind towards road maintenance and facilities, um, th these are the things that I think we should prioritize because it's about a quality of life in the city that we live in, that we want to maintain and encourage people to want to come here and spend their dollars here and, and then make it livable for our citizens. Um, my only other point is, I didn't get an opportunity to say it before, but I was very disappointed with the police department's presentation. 
Um, I think that they seem to have a feeling of entitlement towards the amount of the budget that they um, take, take up. And it's almost just like, it was just cursory for them to have to be here and do it. And that's, it, it's disappointing because they are a very important part of our city. And we do have to take that into account, but being a person of color that's lived in this city for 25 plus years, and I know the negative encounters I've had in this city with the police as someone who never did anything wrong ever, um, I think they could have worked a little harder to justify what their needs were and how they want to uh, continue to receive from the part of the budget that they received. Um, I do not think that they provide enough cultural diversity training to the officers. So I think that's a part of their budget that should be enhanced, but there's other parts that I think um, could be diverted elsewhere for that equally work for public safety, like um, domestic violence issues and, um, and supporting the unhoused. Those are my thoughts so far. Thank you. Uh, Member Cole. Thank you. Um, so, you know, hearing from the community and seeing with my own eyes the issues that are facing San Leandro, um, I think it's very easy to recommend and you can add my tally to um, diversifying the public safety portfolio, uh, enhancing police training, providing a navigation center, implementing police oversight body, fixing our roads, helping small businesses, improving the use of technology. So I support all of that, but you know, I question how are we gonna pay for all of that? Um, and so my focus has been, and you know, I'm far from complete, trying to analyze budget to actual data. Um, Cause I think that's the real picture of the city doing business. So my overarching recommendation um, is that in, in all considerations, we look at the bang for buck, right? Um, I think Vice Chair Gonzalez said it more eloquently at the um, city planning meeting when he said, um, consider the impact per dollar spent. So you're looking more at the population that's being served by the decision and the allocation of money. So in that vein, I have to say, do not spend $20 million on a competitive pool in the little neighborhood of Washington Manor. Um, not only the money, but the maintenance um, and the impact on the neighborhood. My daughter is a member of the San Leandro swim team. We go to neighborhood pools and there are a hundred families descending on a neighborhood. And I don't think um, if you pulled the community, that they would really want that either. Um, so um, kind of in that vein, um, prioritize community desires and values in the decision of the budget. Um, and that was kind of a point I was trying to get across in one of my first comments. And I heard uh, member Prola go to city council and kind of misinterpret that. So at the time I would use the Mulford branch library as an example. And similar to the pool example, how many people are being served by spending $6 million on a new library um, when our roads are falling apart and our infrastructure needs help. So just kind of bang for the buck overall in decision-making. Um, and then kind of looking at the long-term model um, is where I was going next. And um, I haven't really heard many people touch there. Um, and I don't uh, admit to knowing, you know, forensic accounting very much, but I'm seeing things that I question. And so I'm gonna throw questions to staff um, with these recommendations. So, 
Um, in Jeff Kay's uh, summary of the last biennial budget, he was very proud that um, the original contribution goal of 5 million to the uh, unfunded liability um, was vastly exceeded and 16 million have been allocated. So to me, that's 11 million that somebody decided to um, allocate that they hadn't originally decided to allocate. So I, you know, it's a very admirable goal to reduce the unfunded um, pension liability, but that's not a new liability. It's been around forever. It's just now very visible because of new accounting rules. So um, again, um, priority. Is it, is it a priority of the community to do that? Or would they rather have seen $11 million go to street improvement? Um, and I would like, so one of my questions is where can I see in the budget actuals that contribution? And I think it's called the pool program, um, P-U-L-L. -L. And I heard 750,000 went there in 1920, but that there's 16 million there total. So I just would like to see that change over time. And I'd also like to know what is in the long range planning assumption for those contributions? Um, because it seems again, very discretionary. Um, also discretionary are set-asides for capital improvement. And um, I would like to know if there are other reserves or pots of money that the council has discretion on an annual basis. I think I asked and I don't remember the answer. If I may ask, we're reaching just about five minutes. Mm -hmm. If you could maybe come close to wrapping up and then we can move to the next member. We will have time for everyone to have a, a second chance today. Yes. Yes, so um, again, recommend refinement of the planning assumptions in the long-term model. Um, and maybe it's not as scary anymore. I'm really looking forward to the April, May revision with the new measure VV, $2 million, the one-time CARES Act 1.1. Um, I would suggest looking at um, areas with consistent, positive variances year to year to year. Um, investment income, I'm seeing a million dollar positive variance over the last three years, each of the last three years. Um, and then I wonder the fire, if that's a contract, why is there a $2 million variance in the fire department last year? Um, it was 1.2 million in fiscal year 18, uh, 800 million in fiscal year 19. Okay, thank you. So with that in mind, we'll kind of keep keep those things and we'll come back a little bit later. Uh, Reverend Brown. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that member Michael uh, Kim Eubanks texted me and said that he will not be joining the meeting tonight. And he wanted me to convey that message. Um, I would like to first address the budgetary concerns that is the main reason for the 1.7 million set aside the, and the establishment of this task force. And that is the killing of Stephen Taylor on April 18th, 2020. San Leandro citizens need to have a way of counteracting the power that the Police Officers Association and the police have to address officers misconduct besides fear. I agreed with member McFarlane of the lack of self-awareness that the police department presented when they made their presentation to this body, which has led me to the conclusion that nothing will be accomplished through the police department alone. Therefore, I propose the following. The establishment of a police commission that would have the power to discipline officers found guilty of disciplinary and criminal offenses. Two, that punishment can range from days off, demotion, or dismissal. The commission would also set aside, set and review policy for the police department in collaboration with the police chief. The commission would be a body of citizens appointed by each council member and mayor. 
The investigation of citizens' complaints would be conducted by non-law enforcement personnel and an attorney working in the citizens' complaint department. The citizens' complaint department would report directly to the police commission with their recommendations and investigation results. The citizens complaint department would be staffed by two investigators and one attorney on a full time basis. The citizens complaint department would have interpreters service in the major languages of San Leandro citizens. Another issue that I would like to address is the quality of our streets. I found it appalling that the Public Works Department is 10 years behind in servicing the roads and streets, and they seem to be okay with that. The streets are a hazard to the health of the citizens of San Leandro. I wonder how many trip and fall lawsuits has the city settled over the years? Obviously, someone has made the calculated financial assessment that it is cheaper to settle lawsuits as they arise than to fully address this issue and fix our streets. I don't think any one of us would be employed if we had mismanaged private funds in this way, but yet this is precisely what the city government of San Leandro has done. Thank you. Uh, uh, member Offenberg, and then I will be going to Sheridan and Dave Rodriguez. Uh, thank you. Um, I have just a few points. I think uh, the best, one of the best ways we can balance our budget is to increase revenue. And the best way we can do that is to be welcoming to new businesses and new residents in San Leandro. And like any organism, biological, sociological, it's you grow or you die. I mean, we reinvent ourselves on a regular basis by replacing all our cells or welcoming new people and new businesses into our community. So I think we need to put more effort and money into the economic development department. I think we it would be great to have an ombuds person department that would really advocate for um, individual developers or business businesses wanting to come into our city and can really advocate within the city to make sure that um, you know it's a speedy um, uh, process. Uh, other ways, I really agree with Member Chamberlain about looking at uncollected funds. I think that um, Member Chamberlain, we've talked individually and together about the animal control. And I have to say, you know, on the night that uh, Member Chamberlain brought that up, I'm a dog owner. I had no idea that, that you had to license your dog in San Leandro. So my dog now has a license. And so I'm adding $6.67 a year to the general fund. So I'm very proud of that. Um, but I think, you know, $10,000, there's more than $10,000 worth of dogs. So, and I think there's other uncollected funds. I'm not sure where they are, but I think we can take a look at that. Um, um, <clears throat> I think we need to look at a couple things in the police department. One is, when Chief Tudor gave his presentation, one of the things he said, you know, just kind of as an afterthought was that he had 15 officers out on workers' comp claims. That's over 15% of the, of the sworn officers in the department. So what is the true cost of that? Um, I think that, you know, you've got, you know, the actual insurance costs, the, uh, the replacement, you can't replace them. So they're going to be replaced with overtime and so on. So I think we really should take a look at, at um, like a workers comp study and see what we're doing to mitigate that. And I'm talking about the police department, but that could be in the city overall. And there could be, you know, more training, more incentives to stay healthy, both mentally and physically and um, stay at work. 
Uh, I think that we have too many, um, and I'm gonna disagree with Mr. Prola on this, but I think we have too many sworn officers. Um, I know I did the research also um, last year, and I know we're at kind of at the bottom of the Bay Area in terms of about one sworn officer per thousand people. But I don't think um, we need that many. I think that I would love to see like another level of unsworn officer um, that is maybe an entry level unarmed community officer that is just present. And um, listening to uh, um, the San Leandro Downtown Business Association present, you know, comments last night, you know, just having people walking around, they don't have to have guns, they shouldn't have guns really, they can be trained in, you know, just being aware and if there is a problem, you can call for backup or whatever, but a, a sworn officer costs us about $300,000. Um, an unsworn officer could be maybe half that time, half that price and we could have much more of like a public safety presence rather than a police presence. Um, again, with these unsworn officers being unarmed and unmilitarized. And I think that, you know, we could increase the number, increase the presence of our public safety police without um, creating more, um, you know, fear and distrust of our police department. So uh, one other thing, um, I, I do support the vacant property tax. I think that that would be a really good thing. Uh, one real difficulty in bringing businesses and more development to San Leandro is, is that our city is really about 95% built out. So the only way you can really get more development is either to get the people who own those buildings that are in, much, in some part empty to either sell them or lease them or something like that. So um, those are my comments. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt really quickly. Uh, Vice Chair, I neglected to say that Member Chandler did not speak at all yesterday when talking about priorities, and I apologize for that oversight. Yeah, the people that I have, the members that I have, I've got Sheridan next, Day Rodriguez, and Chandler. Looking and if we're prioritizing list. people who haven't spoken, she didn't speak yesterday. So I was just making sure that you had that note. Perfect. Did Sheridan speak yesterday? I'm sorry. No, I did not regarding priorities. And I don't have any notes for you. Uh, so Mr. or Member Sheridan, would you please uh, speak about priorities followed by Dade Rodriguez and Chandler? Sure, thank you, Vice Chair Rodriguez. Um, as far as priorities, I, I think it's pretty well been discussed that to citizens of the city, roads and police or public safety are some of the top two priorities. And I would agree with that. I also think economic development and assistance to businesses affected by COVID-19 needs to be a priority. And of course, um, social programs and for both our unsheltered and mental health programs uh, needs to be a priority as well. But I also think that those programs, we need to look into sustainable funding. Maybe initially, uh, you know, I could get behind the $1.7 million being reallocated towards a navigation center or social services. But I'd have to want, I'd want to initially defer on cuts, further cuts to the police department's budget until more of the community has had an opportunity to weigh in. Um, I think that's, uh, it's a huge decision that could have an impact on a lot of people. Um, as far as my rationale, you know, I read a recent study out of Princeton University that detailed the effects of increase in police staffing and the effects it has on reducing crime, especially during microeconomic periods of recession and in cities with crime spillover from neighboring jurisdictions. We were given data in one of the reports that shows that a hum, a, there's a higher number of officers per capita in cities sharing a border with Oakland, except for San Leandro. 
So I feel that we need to make safety a priority in San Leandro. Its effects directly impact the safety of residents, home values, schools, but further the ability to attract and retain businesses in San Leandro. And we know that these businesses generate the lion's share of our revenue. Um, one of the comments made yesterday almost implied cutting the police budget as a punitive measure in direct response to the department's presentation. And I feel that this task force needs to take recommendations that are best practice, data-driven, and we need to make recommendations that are reflective of the wishes and interests of the broader community. And to that point, the city of Alameda is currently having the same discussion regarding police. They're reaching out to their, com their community for input through surveys. I saw a survey pop up on Facebook, even though I'm not in Alameda. And I, and I think our city should probably do the same or at least explore conducting outreach to the broader community and get a larger sampling of data rather than the comments that were just emailed in or called in or using past ballot polls or results from previous measures. You know, I, I, I think we should um, not recommend, make a recommendation on cutting the police budget as of right now till we have more input. And those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Chair De Rodriguez. <clears throat> Thank you so much. So I had a couple things I wanted to bring up. One is data. We don't have very much of it and it would be great for the city of San Leandro to collect it. Um, if I had a car that wasn't working and they asked me to keep on putting money into it without telling me what was wrong, I would think they were nuts. So why are we not getting more data about even general customer service satisfaction, uh, results-based accountability? What are we doing? How well are we doing it? And does it have an impact? I think it makes sense. I think that's a responsibility that um, elected officials, city staff have to providing services and being accountable for every dollar that's spent. And there needs to be more um, up-to-date and innovative ways of collecting data that is completely absent for many of the departments. And when thinking about data, there's different ways you can do this. There's key informant interviews, there's public opinion polls that can be um, disseminated through the city that isn't just through one um, paid contractor to have a small amount of people surveyed. There's focus groups. You can think of different languages, different ages, different ge geographical areas, um, partnering with non-traditional um, community organizers like churches and PTAs and different places that are non-traditional providers but are really hubs for community engagement, which I've heard a lot lacking in trying to get them to go to meetings. And I can remind everyone if they can mute their microphone when they're not speaking, I'd appreciate it. And I'll stop until everyone does that. Thank you. I'm still waiting. Can everyone mute their mic? I hear typing, it's hard for me to concentrate. Can we mute the city manager's large conference room? And members as well. And members as well. And I don't know if I can do that, but can we have the host mute folks? Thank you. So um, I'm gonna hopefully that doesn't take away from my time. No, nah, you'll be fine. So, so looking at the key informant interviews, public survey, public opinion polls and focus groups, looking at really getting rich, diverse data um, and feedback from consumers of services in San Leandro, I think is really important. I support the reimagining of public safety and reallocating um, monies that aren't being super impactful and not meeting the needs of San Leandro. So looking at the reduction of services in all departments, including the police, that could be reallocated to a more impactful um, delivery of service for San Leandrians is something I think we should seriously consider looking at more innovative ways to do that. Um, 
I also think we should consider a restructuring of human services and park and rec. I think when we're looking at behavioral health, if we're looking at SMI, severely mentally ill, San Leandro residents, uh, we want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of people in acute crisis. We're a city that houses jails, we're housing adult and youth facilities for the severely uh, mentally ill and people and young people and adults who are in acute crisis. And we need to meet the needs of those San Leandrans as much as we meet the needs of all of us San Leandrans. We have John George, we have the juvenile jail, which is the largest juvenile jail in all of Alameda County, I think. We also have Willow, Willow Rock, which is a 12 to 17 year old, um, year olds go there for um, acute crisis um, services when it comes to mental illness. So I think it's just important. This is a, a need that there's a huge hole in. And so I support the navigation center, but I specifically wanted to come up with strategies in addressing the needs of the severe mentally ill in San Leandro and their families. It's an impact um, to their families and caregivers as well. And looking at, and I second or third or just support in general, the navigation center. And also when thinking about um, the separation of human services in Park and Rec, I think there was some really good um, work that set the foundation where we can really refine what we're doing and meet the needs. And that includes behavioral clinicians that have expertise in behavioral health who can meet that need that are city staff when thinking about that navigation center. And one of the other things I wanted to bring up is um, looking at downtown ambassadors. So there are some people who are saying that there could be people and walking around and trying to um, support uh, the downtown area specifically. Thinking about the downtown ambassador program and thinking about creatively, is there a way for us to lock, um, partner with um, youth development? Maybe we can look at San Leandro graduates, for example, or people who are um, former San Leandro high school students, but looking how we can really imagine you know that person as being a downtown ambassador and being a warm handoff if needed to support services if it goes outside of their expertise in that role and that's all i have for now okay thank you let's see who's next on my list uh member chandler please thank you um uh, I had never thought about the downtown ambassador idea. I actually really love that when the, and I just wanna, before I forget, say that, cause I hadn't envisioned it um, and echo that back. Uh, when BART uh, closed its uh, parking lots for an extended period of time, at that time I was working in San Francisco and would arrive back on BART quite late at night. And I remember that was really uncomfortable. and felt very, I felt very uneasy walking far distance um, to my car with our beautiful street lights, which are not particularly bright. Um, and at that time, there was a temporary ambassador program that was started. And I went to a city meeting and asked um, how I might be able to actually call one, like make arrangements to use one, and was actually told, well, actually, you can't do that, right? Um, and that's a perfect example of how safety could be promoted in a way which is much less expensive and could even use volunteer labor to an extent uh, without relying on costly policing. Um, so I came into this task force with a specific goal of looking at how we can address grave harms in our community. Um, I have a background in criminology. I've spent my life working on uh, reducing serious acts of violence. And uh, I am quite disappointed with the way in which public safety is being equated with policing when in fact, most criminological literature is now looking at how policing, which is a reactive response to crime and, and grave harms, um, does not preemptively, uh, pro proactively pre prevent violence. Um, interestingly, many things like social services, access to legal services, things that affect poverty levels, as well as address root causes of harm like mental illness or the things that actually reduce violence. Um, Member Sheridan brought up wanting policing on the border to reduce property crime of an interesting study conducted in San Francisco to look at how they can start addressing their property crime issues. They found that out of about 10 factors they analyzed, policing was the least in 
impactful. What was most impactful was both social services and access to legal services that impact poverty. Um, so with that in mind, um, I definitely support a navigation center. I absolutely support the idea of dividing Parks and Rec from human services. Um, I think it is desperately important that we supplement the outsourcing, outsourcing of mental health services um, and social services that we do. I'm not saying get rid of it, but supplement it with having a clinician on staff who's able to complement those contracts, monitor those contracts, and reinforce the work of those contracts by adding to them in ways that's much more cost efficient than adding to policing. Um, and, and it's quite sh it's shocking to me and actually I think it's reflected in the in the police chief's words that you know he felt that social service people or people from the human services department of our city were not willing to go work with homeless people without police presence. That's probably because none of those people are clinicians, and that is a really important thing to remember. Um, so I I totally support diversifying our safety portfolio. I think it's essential for preventing grave harm in our community. Um, I think we must address the fact that we have not looked at serious mental illness and domestic violence seriously, despite the fact that it's um, a purported goal of our um, city's budget. Um, and uh, I want to say that I don't think that removing 1.7 million from the police budget increase is actually enough. Um, I think that we have gutted many of our other, other departments especially public works, frankly, for far too long. That's why I asked for data on how the proportion of reductions of budgets have balanced out across departments. Um, it's glaring how much full-time employee as well as overtime resources are headed, in, are steered into policing at the expense of other city workers and departments that we rely upon for safety and for public health. Um, I think our roads are incredibly important um, I also think um, I'm concerned that we're not conservatively enough looking at our potential deficit moving forward because there was no mention of global warming impact um, on any of our departments that we heard. Uh, so there was mention of having a small reserve for emergency reasons, but it looks like increased storms, for example, um, and uh, both in terms of potentially causing fires as well as more need for public works to get trees out of the way and repair our roads is going to be the new normal. Um, and I'm concerned that our infrastructure will become even more taxed than it already is. And we need to put more resources there um, in order to ensure that we don't have accidents and things on our roads. Um, if, you and might the, give us, if you might give us one more thought to yeah. kind of try to stay within our five. Is, I want to make sure that we have room for a participatory a discussion of participatory budgeting, where there is regular input from the community, not talking to the community, not polling the community um, with very small defined things, but really giving the chance for the community to regularly, annually, always have a role in shaping what the priorities of the city are. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Member Grant, please. Member Thank Grant. You. Yeah, there you I go. didn't. I didn't know it was going to be my time so quickly. Okay, <laughs> I'm. I'm uh, going to show my face. I'm actually here. Well, okay, I can't show my face. I don't know what I did. Um, so I want to. Um, I want to first say to Reverend Brown's uh, recommendations for reforming the police department that I uh, support those recommendations, but I also want us to be careful about the discussion. I brought this up before the discussion of police reform plus in, uh, in conjunction with budgeting. So a lot of things need to happen. Some of those things are directly related to the budget. Some of those things are directly just related to how police do their business. So um, I want us to be aware of that. Um, for priorities, I think a priority should be code enforcement. There's a lot of trash and debris, especially here on the south end of town. I've reported different occasions, different things. 
Um, Palma Plaza is noted, is notorious for trash being all over the place, 143rd and East 14th. Uh, one of the strip malls where the IRS is, is no, no, um, notorious. And I think that we can make uh, code enforcement something that can pay for itself through the fines, just the concept. Um, I need to look through all the documentation we have because I think another maybe revenue enhancement, maybe the revenue enhancement committee might look at this. Um, our development fees and sewer hookup and water fees, a lot of cities, and, and I can't remember what we do, a lot of cities uh, recover some, some uh, costs through that, through those kinds of fees. Um, my other kind of priorities, uh, I like what people have said. I support what people have said about economic development and housing services and navigation services. I also um, think that we need to talk about public safety in context of police and public safety in context of just being safe and looking at what makes people feel safe. Um, in an earlier meeting, I talked about the SROs. If students don't feel safe, is, is having police present the thing that makes them feel safe? What makes a student feel safe? Um, the mental health, I, I witnessed the CAT program with the police officers yesterday on my street. I don't know what was happening on my street, but there was a lot of need for those kinds of services on my street yesterday, um, more than I've witnessed in the past in one day. And maybe if we can't uh, provide those services ourselves, we can continue to partner with agencies or other cities or so forth. We can look at cost sharing to do those kinds of things. Because one of the things I want us to be careful about is like, if we say the police aren't our mental health people, okay, that's fine, then who is? I don't wanna take something away and leave a vacancy for the service that is still needed. So I, I want us to, if we, we take from one hand, be able to replace it with something on the other hand. Um, and then my other big push is for the equity office and de or department or person, because I think if we had someone monitoring and looking at our services and our city through an equity lens, a lot of what we're talking about from policy points of view would be responded to. Thank you. So according to my notes, and please correct me if you disagree, I think everybody has had a chance to speak except for me. Is there someone that has not spoken? I spoke yesterday, so. Yeah, yeah and that's kind of like first pass. So I, I have a member Chamberlain, Prola, Katz, Lakabe and McFarlane in my notes. So I think everyone shared their priorities as a first pass. So I'm, I'm gonna take- I think Chamberlain um, passed yesterday. I think there was a couple passes yesterday and I think maybe uh, member Chamberlain, I don't know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, please, but you gave a pass yesterday. So I just want neglect you having a first turn. No, to I, did get, I did give a pass and I came up with three things and I kind of felt last night that my three suggestions weren't valued and I wanted to talk about that uh, briefly, if that's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Or is it, or should we wait for- I, I just wanna be, so let's go back for a second time and I will begin with you. Okay. If I may just very briefly share a, a couple of thoughts of my own uh, so that I can get my thoughts in there. A lot of what has been said, I, I agree with. So I'm not gonna try to repeat every single thing that somebody said that, that, that I agree with. Some thoughts that stick out in my mind that haven't been mentioned. Um, I have heard several activities where there might be better um, synergizing with the San Leandro schools. One example that sticks in my mind is uh, credit recovery programs or something to the effect of helping people get their GEDs uh, run by the library. Uh, if I miss, I think I heard that correctly. So looking for opportunities where there are services targeted to youth 
that might be uh, better aligned with things that the school is already doing or whereby we might be able to get efficiencies out of that process. Uh, based on my personal travels around the country, around the world, I have seen the, the use of non-sworn officers uh, as, a, as a public interface in a variety of circumstances is the first level of contact. So I, I strongly encourage us to think about uh, efficiency. Is there a more efficient way to drive public safety through maybe uh, whether we call them ambassadors? There's different terms that are used in different cities, but it's something that I'm very keen on economic efficiency. How can we get the most for the dollars that we're spending? Uh, also a big believer that overall we will get more revenue if we bring in more businesses. Uh, that's not an excuse for waiving all the fees and all the requirements associated with having a business. But I do think that on net having more employees, having more citizens and getting better economies of scale will drive up revenue and not necessarily increase our cost as much. So those would be my, uh, my contributions at this time. So I think that the, the next step in the process that the chair and I had discussed is really having like a second uh, go round to give some, some secondary reactions, maybe some clarifications to what you said originally, um, beginning that process of distilling. Um, after that, then we'll go into a, uh, a more formalized distillation because we have five, five mandates, five questions that we are supposed to address and starting to begin to organize our thoughts with respect to those questions in particular. We've got lots of ideas here that have been tracked and then beginning to, to address the specific questions. So I'll take a pause there. I know it's just about time for our break. Uh, Chair Rodriguez, was there anything else that you wanted to, to highlight about what, what we had discussed? Thank you. Um, no, I think you synthesized it um, nicely. And I just don't want to, I just also want to remember Miss uh, Member Chamberlain didn't give her ideas yesterday. So I don't know if you want to do that before break or after break, um, but just a gentle reminder of that. No, I think you articulated it perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, and I think that that's fair because I do think that it was a, an abbreviated presentation or sharing per my notes. So Ms. Chamberlain, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, give you the floor when Ms. Chamberlain is done. Then we're gonna take our 6.30 break and then come back and start with round two of the round robin. So Ms. Chamberlain. Okay. Um, yeah, I just felt um, not valued yesterday after I had mentioned education revenue in the library uh, immediately after it was stated, I don't support any reduction in the library. And this is just all of our, our high level thoughts and opinions. And it's not here to other than criticizes. I, I felt a little hurt, but anyways, I wanted to express myself why I suggested looking at the library. I've been reviewing a lot of the data. Um, I've done a lot of research on potentially eliminating one of the small libraries. Having a homeless hub is essential. The mm -hmm. library has grants and bond money coming in and restructuring how we use the library is essential during these economic development and transformation for San Leandro into a center for innovation and changing times. Making the main library used more efficiently and potentially starting maybe a bookmobile program could be what San Leandro needs for change. Utilizing the paratransit system for the seniors allows them to have a little outing if they go to the main library. When I was here at home and y'all know for my MCL and knee and everything for six months, it would have been nice if I could have done a little book dash and got some books from the library or videos that were delivered to my door. We're changing, our future isn't the same the way it was in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s going into the library. I said library uh, restructuring, it wasn't uh, fed, it wasn't um, accepted well. And I kind of, I've looked at it a lot. So I just wanted to put that out there where maybe we can talk about this at a later time. 
but not to just automatically think that we want to get rid of a library goodbye. There's other potential things that we can in San Leandro move with the times. I mean, we're virtual now. Who would have thought that? Um, we're doing food to the door. I mean, it used to only be pizza. So if we can move forward with the um, future, maybe there's some opportunity there to take maybe the Mulford one and make it into a homeless or mental health clinic, so something, and instead of remodeling it and spending all these hundreds of thousands of dollars on another library. So that's, I just wanted to get a little bit more out there rather than just library. Thank you. You know, I don't want to speak out of turn, but um, Donna, I think you were. But if we could just, if we could just take our break first, if you don't mind. Sure. Let's take a ten-minute break, then we'll come back and we'll start the second round of round robin, and that way everybody can get their their chance to be uninterrupted. So come back, please, at six thirty-seven. I'll talk to you guys soon.
Okay, by reassembly, or to quickly just confirm that we've got at least a quorum here, can just people quickly turn on video so I can just see if we've got enough people present to say that we've got at least half of our members here. It looks like we've got plenty of people here to continue. Thank you for being so prompt. As we go into the next kind of round robin of this brainstorming, uh, I think what we'd like to do is, now that you've heard uh, lots of different people's perspectives, some of your own perspectives may have evolved or there's, there's something additional that it sparked you to think about that didn't make it onto that initial list that the assistant city manager is, is, uh, has included or is tracking for us. So if during this phase, maybe we can take approximately three minutes per member to highlight something, two things, three things, whatever you can accomplish in three minutes to call out something that you'd like to add or clarify. Uh, again, I think we'll, we'll continue using a, a brainstorming process. There are no right or wrong answers in brainstorming. Uh, not that there ever are right and wrong answers, but just hear the emphasis on let's get ideas onto the table. Because sometimes ideas are shared that initially causes some, some concern, but the more we think about them, they, they, they cause it to maybe change our own perspective. So let's have an environment where everybody can just share their thoughts especially um, we want to get everything out on the table that we can with a full recognition that we've got another month to think about this. Okay, with, with that in mind. I'm sorry, uh, um, Vice Chair, can I add something just really quickly? Certainly. <clears throat> so I wanted to gently remind people, um, you know, in moving forward in this process to, I would recommend um, when speaking about your recommendations to try to make I statements I feel, I think, um, I think, uh, I think <laughs> uh, when having brainstorms, having collective processes, um, it's important to have as many I statements as possible. So assumptions um, aren't made about members in this group or members outside these, this virtual room. So I would gently encourage people to use I statements um, so we can, you know, uh, be accountable for what we're saying and make sure that it's reflecting our truth and we're not making assumptions about others. So just a gentle reminder for myself and for others as we continue this dialogue. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you for that reminder. As, as I look through the raised hands, uh, and I don't know if it's the same order on everybody's screen, but I can tell you what I see on my screen. It is my intention to begin this process uh, in the following order. And I'm gonna take them out to try to just kind of keep this orderly. Uh, the order that I see these in is Prola, Katz Lakabe, McFarlane, uh, Chandler, Reynas, Bailey, and Magayon. And that's not to say that others won't be allowed to speak or anything like that. It's just, this is the order that we're going to begin in and we'll proceed. Okay, Mr. Prola, your three minutes. Yes, I, I do wanna say that I was cut off yesterday and according to my watch, I didn't have the full five minutes, but I understand it was getting towards 8.30, so I understand. But you, you are correct. That is my recollection as well. If you'd like an indulgence, we can, we can give you an extra couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I did want to say that um, uh, when I pointed out that we were 11th out of the 13 counties and officers per population, per 1,000 population, that if we had the average of what the other counties were, we would have 20 more officers. I wasn't advocating for that. I was just pointing that out. And officers are very expensive. I understand that. We couldn't afford them. However, uh, I also don't think we can, we can cut any unless, unless we eliminate some of the duties that they have. And that I'm not sure this body uh, can make a good judgment without the data. I did hear Jeanette Dong say that she would hate to go out on some of these cases uh, without, uh, or her people 
would be reluctant to go out on some of these cases without an officer along. Uh, now, having said that, I do come out of the labor movement and I understand negotiations. I understand compromise. Uh, I, I wanna say that I'm not in favor of defunding the police, but I am in favor of reforms. And I think that's how we should frame that issue. I'm out of the George Lakoff school of thought. You have to frame the issue correctly. Issue correctly. Um, so what I'm thinking is this is a unique opportunity because this year, hopefully by the end of this year, we will have a new permanent police chief. We will have a new permanent city manager. And my proposal is really simple, is that the new police chief get together with the new city manager. They could be the same people that are acting, by the way, but the ma managers right now get together. They get together with Jeanette Dong and human services, who I love dearly. And I, that's why she was hired was for human services without a doubt. And I believe that they're the ones that should come up with the plan on what the police chief can do, what the, the human services department can do. And I think they will come up with a much better plan, I, I believe, than, than we are capable of. And I think that's a unique opportunity for them to do so. Just, it just, it's kind of like the stars align. We're gonna get a new city manager, we're gonna get a new police chief, and we have a tremendous person that thinks about homeless and, and um, mental, mentally ill people. Uh, and she's, that's been her level of expertise all her life, in my opinion, anyway. And so that's what I would propose, that, that it be, they all get together and decide who can do what. Um, I, I do think cutting the budget now would be very difficult. Um, since we are, we really already have not all seven shifts uh, covered except by five officers on the night shift. We have seven beats, we have seven officers on the day, uh, but we do not have seven officers on the night shift when it can get very dangerous. And um, I, I just think we owe it uh, to uh, both the police department and the human services department and the new city manager and new police chief to work that out. Uh, and we can give suggestions, of course. Um, the other thing is what I haven't seen us do so far, unless I, I heard wrong, is um, uh, set a goal. I set a goal or we set a goal on a finance committee to not cut any permanent employees if possible during the last severe recession, um, we did ask each department head to give us reductions that may be hard, but that they could live with if they had to, at least till the economy turns around. And uh, I would like to add that to it. Um, uh, we did let go of a lot of temporary and part-time employees, which we still haven't come back to where we were before. Uh, so. The budget has been cut before, employees have been cut before, but they were almost all temporary and part-time. We have not offered our top level, our, our employees that have uh, many years of service in, um, incentive um, to retire early. Um, uh, and uh, that would keep a lot of our younger, uh, less expensive employees that would we'd be able to keep on if it gets to that point. I don't think we're at that point yet. And uh, I can, I can kind of say that I do agree that some of our um, in, uh, uh, renovating could be cut back, including pools. And my wife will get mad at me for this, but um, the 2 million we're gonna spend on the Casa Peralta renovating, at least till the economy recovers. The library. Mr. Mr. Prola. Yes. Two plus three is five. And so I'm going to ask that uh, maybe in a third go round, we bring you back. Uh, Member Katz Makabe. Thank you. Um, quickly here as, as I can. Um, so from the various department presentations, it's unclear how each department's success each year is judged 
or even whether there are any goals or objectives to help measure that department success. Um, I think that gets to the point of government efficiency. Um, I don't know, it, it's not clear to me after all those presentations, how success or even whether success is judged. Um, on the revenue side, um, I'd like to see an increase in in lieu fees. Um, that's um, the current amount does not adequately cover the cost of avoiding inclusionary housing needs. However, I suspect that that money um, might not go to the general fund. So that might be um, a moot point as far as general fund income. And I'd like to point out that I wholeheartedly agree with, I believe it was member McFarland um, talking about pools and about dropping the competitive lap pool and consider dropping or delaying other capital improvement projects that are more in the category of nice to have um, as opposed to necessary. Thank you. Member McFarland. All right, hopefully, hopefully my internet's a little bit better today. Um, I wanted to address Member Sheridan's comments about punitive measures to the police department. Um, I believe it's not punitive, it's economic. And he mentioned that we should use best practices. I think the best practices are to take action after something goes wrong. Best practice is to do something different when things are not running well. In the 2019 report uh, for the police department released in 2020, there was no references to officer involved killings, even in the section that discussed uh, the number of uses of excessive force. There was no net new policy as a response to the embezzlement scandal. It's just, oh, we, we ran audits to make sure we're not doing it anymore. And so the best practices of the San Leandro Police Department have resulted in multiple killings um, and thousands of dollars stolen. So we need to revisit these best practices if that's the outcome that we're getting for our tax dollars. So to, uh, the, um, the best, my recommendation is to move money from a high cost department. And I think I have this one. I think you, you have the, um, the suggestion higher up in the, in the list, um, uh, assistant city manager. But it's the moving from a high cost department, the police department, to a lower cost department, human services, that is likely to provide programs at lower cost that actually help our most vulnerable populations. In terms of economic re needs of rebalancing our budget, this can be an effective strategy. Lastly, if, if, if public safety is important, then we have to have an open mind about how to provide that safety. Um, like the homeless team that the police department tried to disband when we first um, when they were first trying to reallocate money, they were taking the most innovative department that they had that was actually helping the um, public and that's what they tried to disband. But we need to reimagine it and figure out different ways to provide it in ways that can be more cost effective and where the mistakes in those departments don't happen and don't result in death. So I want us to reimagine the way we spend this money to provide the best public safety in a cost effective way, even if that's not the way that it's allocated today. I think that the human services department has shown that they have the capability to do so. And so reallocating money from the police department to the human services department in coordination with moving some of those responsibilities that are currently um, handled by the police department is a way that we can do it for less money and help rebalance our budget and where the mistakes don't result in people dying sometimes. Member Chandler. Thank you. Um, and I want to thank Member McFarland for his uh, comments. I agree completely that, that that holding the police department accountable is, in fact, a very important budgetary goal. Um, and I'm very concerned. I actually, so folks, a couple of folks have mentioned disappointment with the police department's presentation. I had a similar disappointment actually with the Parks and Rec and um, Social Services Department presentation. Clearly, there is great love for public health and for people's outcomes in terms of health from that department, but there was a complete absence of real tangible steps that are being done to address severe mental illness and real crises um, in our county other than outsourcing. And again, once again, I would not, as Member Pola uh, posed, leave it up to the current leadership of that department to figure out how to deal with these issues, given that there is no clinician at the top or anywhere on the staff of that department. And again, I think I agree. I think we should move money from policing into social services, but I think we need to do it with uh, a guarantee that there will be a clinician put in charge, frankly, of that department and be able to supplement the work that's already being done. Um, I also wanted to thank Member Prola for bringing up the labor perspective. 
in this uh, in this discussion, I think it's really important to recognize the sacrifices that our city staff have made in other departments when the police department has enormous political power through their union and has really policed the staff in the other departments. I think that we have to look at this not only as an equity issue, but again, as an issue around diversifying our public safety resources. Um, and then I wanted to just say I do not support um, increasing the, uh, the dog license um, uh, enforcement until and then if we can actually demonstrate that the enforcement wouldn't cost more than we would gain from charging those very small fees. So there's a lot of research that shows that uh, those kinds of small municipal fees actually cost much more to enforce and uh, create equity issues where you know, lower income people are harassed through assessment of those fines. And I would not support that again until and if there was real clear evidence that enforcement would be done equitably and actually to generate money rather than to lose money. Thank you. Member Reynas. I think you're muted. Thanks. <laughs> um, before I start, I just wanted to briefly address um, Member Chamberlain's comments um, because I believe they referred to mine. Um, we don't, we don't need to. I just expressed Are you what sure? I felt. Okay. You well, to I just wanted to just if reiterate. I could, if you I know, could your... interject, if I could interject for a moment. Yeah. I think during the brainstorming process, it would be very helpful if people would just express their own views by saying, you know, I I believe I would like to see I propose, and so we can stick to that format. Yeah, um, that's all. And I, the chair and I would appreciate it. Absolutely. That's all I just wanted to clarify. You know, I'm an English teacher and um, I would have wanted to bring up libraries regardless because books are um, something I care about. And I don't, I, I haven't looked back at my comments. I had them typed up, but I just wanted to say, you know, everyone's opinion is valuable and, and there's no, you know, I did not, I don't want anyone to feel like their opinion was invalidated by my opinion because my opinion are, is just that, my opinion. Um, so going at the issues at hand, um, I, I, someone brought up the ambassador program. I just wanted to add my tally by that. I think it's a great idea. Um, I would suggest that it's not funded through the police budget though, that um, the budget, the money for that program would be reallocated from the police budget into another department um, so that the police wouldn't be the one running the ambassador program. I also feel that we should look into some sort of mental health first response. Um, I've done a lot of research into CAT and CAT is still a police first response. So what that means is it goes through 911, the police arrived on scene and depending on how the person involved is behaving, the police can then choose to engage um, mental health services. And um, I specifically was interested in whether or not the CAT program would have prevented Stephen Taylor's death. Um, and what I learned was that it would not have because um, the bat is interpreted as an improvised weapon. And so if someone is experiencing a mental health crisis, but they are holding anything that they perceive as um, a weapon, um, they would not receive mental health first. And so Denver has an interesting program that actually sends social workers in place of police. And I think that that establishing one maybe through the human services um, would be useful. Um, I uh, support clinicians. I wanted to add my tally um, next to that. I support clinicians um, in the human services department. I think they're desperately needed. I think they need more staff um, in general uh, so that we can actually have a robust human services department. I, my understanding is that, um, you know, we need to be spending more time developing those social services. And I also want to add my tally um, in front of data, which I believe was mentioned by uh, Chair uh, De Rodriguez and Mike, maybe, I can't remember who was the second person who brought it up, but I wanted to say that that was something I'm interested in exploring as well. Thank you. Member Bailey. And I can't see just, your face. No, there just, you are. Just trying to find my mute button. A <laughs> um, couple of things I'd like to add. Um, one is uh, uh, in the public works budget, climate action, 
um, there is uh, an, uh, information from that department that they could really use uh, 75,000 a year um, to uh, hire an intern and to have grants to nonprofits to move their, not their climate action uh, agenda. I also would like to um, uh, consider, and I don't know um, how much leverage the city has, but um, since the pension costs are huge, if there's an opportunity to seriously look at employees um, contributing more uh, to their pension um, than they currently do. Um, and on the issue of police oversight, um, I didn't list that amongst my um, proposals, um, but uh, anybody knows me would know, yes, that's something I would, uh, uh, you can add my name to that list. And I would just comment that um, I'm not sure I totally get the idea that, uh, that we should divorce the consideration of police, so police oversight from these kind of short-term budget decisions. And, um, and to the extent that a very particular form of civilian oversight was proposed tonight, I just would encourage people who have interested in this to attend the city council workshop on February 22nd, where an outside consultant will be sharing with the council, what are the different forms of civilian oversight what does it take to be effective and what do they cost? Because they're not all the same. Um, and I think that'd be important information for folks to have. Um, and lastly, and it's a longer comment than I probably have time for, but the, well, I'll just summarize it that I feel that what we're, what we're talking about around the police budget and the need for uh, meeting social service needs is gotta be seen as a package. It's pretty hard to, uh, create resources for human services without looking at where other resources are tied up in the police department. Just to, I had looked at the, at the, the city council's uh, presentation on uh, goal setting. They had a, a, an interesting chart on the staffing going back to 2008. And it turns out the uh, city uh, lost 15% of the positions. They had 500 back in 2008. They have 437 now. Um, that's 63 positions were lost. 40, 40 of those positions were public works, library, and recreation and human services. Only 10 were the police, and yet the police have a third of the budget. Um, there's something wrong with that picture. I, anybody, regardless of what uh, the surveys are cited or whatever, it's very clear that the council has been very responsive for the call to um, give police maximal resources now it's time to look more holistically at how we can move those to better meet our public safety needs more broadly. Thanks. Okay, just for the sake of transparency, I'm going to be calling member Magallon, Davis, De Rodriguez, Sheridan, Herb, and Cole in that order. So member Magallon, please. Hi, thank you. Um, I want to just say I appreciate all the shared ideas. It's, um, this list has really developed nicely and it's great to see the growth through ideas of all the members here. Um, I do want to go back and um, say, you know, I really am advocating also for some form of um, bookmobile extension services for the library. As I mentioned, I worked for the county in bookmobile and extension services and um, extension services. We assisted with the unhoused, um, uh, probation, uh, various social service and provided um, a good link for people that were in crisis situations for their children and for families to have resources. Uh, I also do appreciate um, the um, mention of the senior population by member Kim Eubanks. I know that's one of our largest growing populations in San Leandro. And if we're looking at the future, we really need to look at ways that um, we can help with the population because we ourselves are in there. Some of us are there now. Some of us are a few years away. Some of us are, you know, a few decades away. 
but it having that foresight and again the sustainability for the city. Um, the other thing that I would like to mention is if we can get some type of salary comparisons for local agencies. So if we're speaking of mental health or behavioral specialists and clinicians, um, it would be nice to know what the salaries are because for say Alameda County, um, because we wanna be able to present a competitive salary for this city. And then it's also going to involve MOUs, uh, getting benefits together. So there's a lot more involved if we're looking at comparing salaries um, within departments and moving some of that over to the city instead of utilizing county um, services. And um, the ambassador program, I, I really appreciate that as well. Um, and it's something similar to the park specialists that I mentioned, there's already an existing um, position or uh, some type of um, um, job specs with HR for that position. So we have something in our past that we can refer back to. Thank you. Member Davis, please. Thank you. First off, I, I want to say I've been really impressed with this whole process and the amount of thought and effort that uh, members of the committee have put into this. I compliment everybody. One of the things I'm most um, concerned about is making sure that we provide the necessary tools uh, for our city staff to succeed. And whether it's a police department dealing with intervention skills or public works dealing with design build, uh, training is really critical. And without training, new staff just learns how existing or previous staff did things. And so uh, through the training, that enable them to learn uh, and be aware of what the best practices are, what other agencies are doing and uh, provide them with another tools or maybe multiple tools for them to be successful in their uh, respective jobs. And I'll leave it at that at this time. Thank you very much. Member Day or Chair Day Rodriguez. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Um, I just had a couple comments. Um, so I think it would be important for us to consider other um, frameworks in which you have um, services um, provided for the severely mentally ill, um, people with various cofactors, possibly substance abuse, PTSD, and not having somewhere, not having a home to live in. Um, I think that uh, there's a specialty in, um, in uh, training and clinicians who work with the marginally housed, who have those different cofactors, who have um, psychosocial stressors that make it very difficult to um, successfully deliver services to those residents. And I feel like we need to look at other jurisdictions, um, both within Alameda County and outside of California who are using very innovative ways, qualified staff, um, and what I mean by that, being very specific on the roles and responsibilities of whatever um, uh, classification that the city is um, projecting or going to propose for behavioral health, that we're being very specific on what we want them to bring. Um, and I think that as a city staff person myself, I'm a, I work outside of San Leandro, but in the city I work with, you know, there's a certain expectation of staff and expertise. And that's what that basis of their hire. Um, and so I think if we were to reimagine how we deliver the services to um, the most vulnerable in San Leandro, we can find some real um, great strategies that other jurisdictions are working at because it's important to keep the humanity in the delivering of services and not to be fearful of other people who are our neighbors, who are our brothers, who are our sisters, our parents, who are in crisis. 
and the humanness of them needs to be um, the first priority. And that begins with having a practitioner who knows how to make that human connection and to best provide services. Secondly, I wanted to talk a little bit about the hire of the police chief. So I, I think it's important for us to remember that when we're thinking about um, recommendations and guidelines that we really have it cemented in actual um, um, things that, that can actually happen, right? So when we're talking about other um, classifications within the city, other staff people and what we hope they do, what we wish they would do, I think it's really important for us to have a cemented idea of what that protocol is gonna look like, what that recommendation is gonna look like, um, because we need to make sure that we're accountable and what our recommendation is, and we have to make sure that they're accountable of what the expectation is and um, make sure that they're responding accordingly when we're talking about city staff um, working together, especially in regards to meeting the needs um, of San Leandro residents, whether it's through police or through other departments as well. Thank you. Member Sheridan. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair. I just wanted to circle back and um, actually follow up on Member Parola's comments. I do agree with uh, him that we do need police reform. There's, there's no doubt in my mind on that. Uh, where my ideas and ideas that I have differ from others is how to accomplish that and what that looks like. Um, I, I do believe that we should defer on further cuts to the police department until we have a new city manager, until we have a new police chief. Um, I think it should also involve more community input. I think this is such a big task and such an important one that it deserves more input and more thought into because there's a lot of ideas going around in this task force, a lot of great ideas, but I believe that it involves more due diligence to do it justice. Um, even if that includes, you know, another task force and the city council uh, naming another task force just to tackle this subject. Um, I also believe that, you know, some of the ideas with non-sworn officers, potentially knowing uh, labor could run into some uh, resistance with the labor at the police. Uh, they may not want non-sworn officers. It, it, it could become an issue. I do agree with member Katz Lacabe on efficiencies. Um, I think that we need to develop rubrics for determining success, even if that means hiring an outside consultant to help the city uh, put those together. And those are my comments. Thank you. Member Herb. Thank you. I think uh, based on, I feel based on the presentations from the police department, that in order to be successful, we need to have a, a high level of specificity in what safety services would be provided outside of the police department. And there, there are a number of, you know, the downtown ambassador, the, um, you know, animal control, park, um, park, ambassadors, but in working with this list, I think we are already have a lot of ideas and it's a matter of pulling it together and really looking at it and, and presenting a clear alternative where cuts, where clearly the police would, would where less time would be required of, it, of individual police officers. Otherwise I would expect to, to you know, just hit, hit roadblocks once again. Um, again, I'd like to, to bring up the issue of a citywide um, reporting mechanism of accomplishments of, you know, how do you measure what, what you're doing? How do you measure the effectiveness of a summer program for youth? How do you measure, um, and, and I think 
I think we need to put some time and energy into creating, in, in creating this structure, it requires the city to look at what are their priorities? What do they care about? Um, a minor point in the, the code enforcement is that it, it can change community expectations. And as a city, we need to have some sort of idea of who we are. Certainly littering is an issue and fines, whether they're collected or not, serve to keep the city cleaner. Um, I agree that the, the manor lap pool should be taken from the budget and staff development is absolutely crucial. And I had, I had, I'd like clarification. I think it was member Offenberg, but I could be wrong, who talked about combining public works and engineering. And um, I'd like some clarification at some point on that. That's it, thank you. Thank you, member Cole and then member Schaefer. Thanks. I wanted to add to my recommendations that the city continue the soft hiring freeze indefinitely. Um, what I think that means and um, what I hope it means is that there is no rubber stamp approval once a current position becomes vacant that it automatically gets um, recruited and filled. Um, so I think you're, you're not cutting current full-time staff, but you take the opportunity when a position does become vacant to um, really examine the need. Um, you look at the duties and maybe uh, opportunities to realign. Um, you don't just automatically fill it because a consultant 10 years ago says this department should have this many people, right? You really look at the current need, the current technology that's in place. Um, and a lot of times in my experience, the person in the position kind of drives the duties that that person is given and therefore that the duties of the position. Um, and then once you strip the person out, maybe the, the position itself can be reimagined. Um, I also think it's a good time to look at uh, comparable salaries. Um, not that other cities are always the best guideline, but um, as some kind of benchmarking effort. And if this is the time where we have to um, add our votes to the other items, I can do that because um, I have a long list of um, new additions after hearing from other folks. I'm really learning a lot about delivery of um, social services and um, what reimagining the police can look like. So I for sure would like to add a, a yes to clinician on staff and I can give you my list if that's where we're at. So oh, we'll, definitely have, we'll definitely have time to vote and, and all that kind of stuff. You have maybe about a minute left of your time if you wanna just highlight a few things or okay. you can say pass, I mean, it's, it's up to you. Yep, let me, um, for sure, clinicians, let me add my vote to um, data-driven decisions. I think that's very important. Um, separating human services from parks and rec. Ongoing community engagement in, input. And the ambassador program. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Member Schaefer, please. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I want to um, uh, maybe this is good for the revenue enhancement committee on um, some ideas. Am I on? on? All right. So um, I want a couple areas. I'm, I'm concerned about how much we have a reliance on sales tax. Um, is really concerning to me. Every time we have an economic downturn, then we have to cut people. We have to find a more sustainable way. A couple ideas that uh, I think two broad categories with one example each. We need. We can think about municipalizing things that our residents spend a lot of money on, 
uh, that we could provide the service better and potentially uh, uh, get revenue from. An example would be uh, a solar power program where we um, provide the energy for the city. So get off of PG&E and have our own energy um, that we can provide clean energy uh, and, and um, bring in some income. Another area we should look at is places where money is leaving our community. Uh, so it's not going around uh, the community. Um, an example of that would be uh, we should keep as much of that within our community, circling within our community. An example of that would be like landlords. Um, if they're out of town and they own buildings, uh, then those that money and rent is going out of the city every month. It's not being spent here. You know, so is there a way if we had like rent control, we could actually hit levy fees on landlords per unit and we could recoup some of that money um, without passing it on to, to tenants. Um, and that could help with uh, all kinds of human services regarding tenants, housing, uh, any number of things. Um, I do want to give a shout out to data. Data is super important uh, to do any of these things. We do have to um, uh, we do have to study it more. Um, I, I also want to be cautious that we don't uh, prioritize you know, data to the extent that we don't act, right? Because you can analyze everything forever. Um, and there are a lot of good studies that are out there. So, you know, some good reporting and some good um, research um, could be a good place to, to start. But we do need to understand um, the needs of our city, uh, the role and impact of the police. One example of data would be like crimemapping.com, where you can see the interactions of the, of the police. We don't subscribe to that. Oakland, Hayward, if you look at the map there, um, you can see that San Leandro is a blank. So the way that we report data and our understanding of what is happening and what our police response is, um, is very hard to decipher. So getting in a, a, presenting that information to all residents, but also people that are involved in these decisions would be helpful. Um, I do think an outside group to collect and analyze data um, would be important rather than leaving it up to uh, say department heads or the people that are directly impacted by changes, it should be some kind of outside goop, whether that's a task force, uh, uh, you know, some other agency, um, but they do need to, you know, it does need to be independent of the agencies that they would be, uh, you know, reforming in a sense. Um, so, you know, I, that could be part of maybe an oversight. I don't know if that puts too much on that, um, but whatever that group is, it should have resources to hire researchers resources to hire pollsters, researchers to, you know, uh, to, to conduct interviews with city staff and, and really get some things done. Um, and I just think, you know, the effects of climate change are going to be huge. And we have to consider a lot of uh, that as part of that public safety portfolio, um, you know, climate smoke, how we how we deal with re, uh, emergencies, including pandemics. This is all part of public safety, right? We're not safe if we're getting COVID. All right, then the police can't protect us from that. So uh, we're more and more, we're gonna have to deal with that. So let's do um, account for that in, in uh, you know, our priorities. And that's, that's what I got. Excellent. So I think by, by my review of the participants, I don't see any raised hands. I see one for Melissa Wong now. Member Wong. Vice Chair, I just figured, why not? I'll just give my two cents. Um, I really appreciate everybody's participation. Uh, really great thoughts. And I actually thought about it last night and of course during the break. Um, um, so I wanted to point out a few things. Um, I, are, I sent an email earlier today to the task force mailbox. So this is maybe a little rehash of some of the thoughts that I had there. Um, on vacancies. Um, and Member Cole did um, touch on it as well, too. Um, my thought on um, vacancies. Um, in the budget, it is accounted for as far as um, vacancies. And I really think we need to look at vacancies, whether it be a retirement or um, other way, ways of turnover. Um, I can see on the list that there are some um, suggestions of additional positions and maybe we could entertain um, a contractor, whether it be for a coordinator or a grant writer having a contractor, because um, you could determine in that one year whether or not this should be a full-time position before you, you, you know, commit to having a full-time position. So that could be something. I'm not saying, I, personally, I think a grant uh, writer, a full-time grant writer would be a great one, but if we're worried about the budget for the next year, 
maybe that would be a shorter term commitment and you could still get results and review uh, the products and see whether or not this is a worthwhile position. So, um, you know, and um, also there are vacancies. Um, the, um, the response uh, for my questions uh, on vacancies that there were uh, various reviews by management on the vacancies, but I really wanted to know the age of the vacancies, if they were vacant for a year or two years. Again, it, it's similar to what Member Cole mentioned about whether or not that's needed. Um, so I didn't see that. And perhaps um, just a short review of how old these are will, will probably uh, free up some savings. Um, another area that I also had um, I think I, I advocate every now and then is encouraging everyone to really take a deep dive in um, the requests from the departments. Um, are they things that they need versus what they want? And are we really paying for those costs at the end? So that means that uh, we're looking at the budget, what they're asking and get, getting approval for, but what they actually end up spending at the end. Make sure that uh, we hold um, and also to review them for the budget next year. Um, and then second, uh, the thirdly and lastly is really about um, some of these um, budget for actual. And I could give you an example. I didn't mean to actually look at the police over time, but it turns out when I was looking and I saw the, um, the big variances, it happened to be police over time. So just quickly. Um, Can you hold on a second, Ms. Wong? Yes. Uh, somebody is rubbing a microphone or blowing inadvertently into their microphone. If we could please be sure that you're muted so that that doesn't inadvertently happen. Thank you, Member Wong, if you could continue. Oh, are you asking? No, somebody else was, was oh, okay. making some noise in the background. And so I had I asked them to mute. The, there's rain, so maybe it's me. Okay. Yeah, no, you, you're very clear. In my you're tangent. very clear. Okay. Budget to um, actual. So so on the overtime, um, and it just happens to be the police overtime, uh, the response I got uh, because I was looking at line items was that um, the budget was for one line item and, and I was looking at the other line items and looking at the actual when there was no budget. Um, but very quickly at 2020, uh, there was a budget uh, for two point, almost $2.4 million for overtime, but the actual was less than a million. And in 2019, it was 1.3 million budget, but it, it turns out to be 800,000 or less than 800,000. And then 2018, there was a budget of 1.3 million, but the actual was 700. So if you look at that, at very least, 1 million would have been a savings. So um, that's just one example. Um, I, I think that there's just opportunities to really look at what was being asked and what was spent. And um, I'm looking forward to us um, reviewing the um, mid-year progress. And I'd like to know whether or not we're going um, toward that. And if there is a, a perceived deficit and it turns out to be a, um, a surplus that there are opportunities for us to get some other things done. Thank you. Thank you. So at this point in time, I see one raised hand, I think, that everyone who has wanted to share on the second round has gone. Mr. Davis has gone before, but I'm, right before we take our break, I'm gonna go ahead and take member Davis and then we'll take our 10 minute break, unless that's an in, inadvertent raised hand, you tell me. Mr. Davis, you're on mute. In, inverted uh, raised hand, thank you. No problem. Okay, so at this point in time, we've got 727, at least according to my watch. Let's see what the cell phone says. 727. So let's come back at seven. I see yes, an, there's a question from somebody. I see, a, I see another hand up. I see a hand up. Okay, I do too now. Uh, Reverend Brown, is it a, a clarification or can we take our break on the bottom of the hour and then come back? It's just a procedural question. I was wondering whether we would get the notes that the uh, assistant city manager has been taken 
and have time to absorb those and then be able to come back and decide which ones we do agree with. Just a procedural question. S certainly we will. Okay. Certainly we will. Thank you. Okay. So with that in mind, let us come back at 8.39 in 10 and a half minutes, 8.39. Or 739? Uh, yeah. 739? 739? Yeah. <laughs> um, did you want the, the Ooh, an hour. now? Did you want the spreadsheet now? Or are you, are you talking about in the future, like, you know, after we're done tonight? After, after we're tonight. done tonight was what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. Thank you.
Okay, <clears throat> as we regather, if we could please take one quick moment and I've got, whoops, I've got Reverend Brown, Member Brown and Member Sheridan with their hands up. So I've, I've got track of that, but I'm gonna ask you to lower your hands for just a second so that I can ask a question and then have clear visibility to, to an answer. So at the end of our agenda for today, we're not there yet, but we've got task force member comments, some time allotted for that. And so by show of hands, could I see members who at least as of right now think that they will be making a comment so that we can make sure we reserve, we reserve a little time for that. Okay, we've got member Prola, anybody else? Okay, thank you. Member Perla, if you could put your hand down. Um, before going to members Brown and Sheridan, I wanted to give you just a little bit of a walkthrough of kind of where we anticipate going next as part of 4D3. We're going to take some of these ideas on the spreadsheet that members have generously offered, and we're going to do a mapping. We're going to look at those five priorities, the five mandates, the five questions that we were asked to address and to begin making the connection between some of these ideas that we've raised and the five priorities that were identified and fully recognizing that we may have some priorities that have nothing assigned to them. We may have some of these recommendations that map into three or four of the different questions. So this is not a one-to-one -one map. And so we'll kind of go through those and we'll solicit members' comments, reactions. So that's one big picture element of where we're going. Uh, there is a quick reminder, by the way, that there were some members that were not able to make it today. Uh, they have excused absences for today and yesterday. So just please, please, please recognize that this process of generating ideas We'll continue. We've got a month ahead of us for generating ideas, listening input for the community. And so don't, don't believe or feel like we're shutting down that process of soliciting ideas. So uh, before going into that mapping process, there were two raised hands. And I don't know if they're for clarifications or other types of questions. So I do wanna check in with member Brown to see if you still have a question or comment. No, you answered my <laughs> Perfect. And then member Sheridan. Thank you. Mine was just a clarification. On the Excel spreadsheet, uh, line 87, not sure if it was the way I said it or it was the way it was heard or just the way it was typed. Um, it says new police chief recruitment needs to include community input. Now, I'm not opposed to the community having input on selecting the new chief. But I wanted to clarify, oh, it looks like the line, there we go. Um, new police chief, along with the city manager, may need input as far as um, reforming the police department or looking at what any type of reform or changes would look like. And that's, that's simply it. Thank you. And then for clarification, uh, and I'll ask the assistant city manager about this. There was also a comment about having public input to the selection, which is separate from kind of this, the, the precise wording here. Is that reflected someplace else? I think that's where it was. Okay. But it was with uh, member Sheridan. Okay, I've definitely heard some folks talk else? about community input to the process of the selection. Well, I'm happy to add it. I don't- Yeah, if you, uh, could, if you could add that at the bottom. Okay. And then, um, 
So I think that what we will do here is take the next approximately 40 minutes to uh, probably most efficiently is just go to the very top of this sheet and begin uh, mapping against that process. And I'll ask, you know, any member can offer their first, their recommendation, their observation about which ones it covers. I think it's basically what you've started there in column D. And we can confirm whether uh, members agree to that. Just out of no. courtesy to, I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say, and I won't have my feelings hurt if I mischaracterize something and um, you want me to restate it, so feel free. Okay, and so then just again out of, I know different people are using different devices, maybe phones, et cetera, so just out of courtesy for those that may not have a large screen or the ability to read what's there, if you would be so kind to say, you know, for instance, say, okay, item number one, focus on training, resist temptation, et cetera. If you could do the reading, Certainly. And then I'll look for hands of folks that, and, and say, you know, it's priority number one, uh, community priorities or directive number one, community priorities. And then we'll see if, if people have input additions at other places where they believe it maps. Okay. Uh, number one, focus on training, in parentheses, resist temptation to cut in hard times, get outside of the city to identify best practices. Um, this was from member, uh, I'm not going to say, I'm just going to yeah. say who. I, I, would, I don't know that you need to say which members ah, provided okay. it because it's just an idea. Okay. And mm -hmm. so that was a priority, a council priority. That would be a community priority. Okay. So then I'm just going to go in order. If somebody believes that it maps to something other than community priorities, remembering that our other priorities are number two, budget balancing strategies. Number three, enhance public participation in the budget process. Number four, the reallocation of the $1.7 million. And number five, strategies for long-term sustainability. Okay, I'll start with Member Bailey. You're muted. Yeah, I, I was actually wanted to um, raise the issue that I, I thought it would, I didn't realize two rounds that was it, we're gonna start doing this kind of sorting. And I, I'm guessing I'm not the only one that might have some additional items they'd like to throw out there, even if we did it very briefly. Um, but that's, you know, some- might, Yeah, might, might I encourage, because we're going to circulate this sheet and because this is not the end of ideas at all, right, we're gonna continue adding some ideas uh, I'd prefer that we stay on this particular task, keep track of those ideas so that we can revisit the idea pool next session. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a simple process question, please. Yes, ma'am. Can we make uh, at the top of the spreadsheet uh, lines four through eight or A, B, C, D? Can we just make them one, two, three, four, five so that they match the one, two, three, four, five that we're, we're matching them to? Thank you. You bet. Sorry about that. Mr. Bailey or Member Bailey, were you still interested in commenting on the mapping to the directives? I, I think I made my comment. So you okay. want to move on, that's fine. Okay, member Reynas. Yeah, I believe we could also map it on to five. It's not the case for every department, but in some departments, more training can lead to a uh, lower risk of lawsuits in the future. Um, and so I think being proactive about training could contribute to our sustainability there. Thank you. Any other observations about this focus on training and looking outside the city to get best practices, to identify best practices? Mr. Bailey or, or Member Bailey, your hand is still up. 
Is there a comment on this particular item? No. Okay. Assistant city manager, item number two. Okay. Or idea number two. Sure. Uh, have uh, the public works department and the engineering and transportation department go back to being combined. Uh, and this would be a budget balancing strategy and a long-term sustainability strategy. Member Bailey. Member Bailey, you're muted. There you go. I don't have my hand up. Is it, are you? It is showing it, but maybe it's, uh, let's see. If it took it down, I thought. It did go down and then it popped back up. Okay, that. there you go, it's down. Any other suggestions there? Okay, let's move to number three. All right, use of technology to reduce conflicts. For example, a fix-it ticket by mail so that uh, the police uh, don't need to interact. Um, and this was uh, a community priority, and this could also be budget balancing strategy or uh, long term sustainability. I think we've got use of technology in a number of different examples. Um, this one was particularly to reduce conflicts with uh, the police department, but we can subcat, you know, later on you all can subcategorize technology and, you know, there's a lot of ways technology can uh, meet all of these directives. And part of what we can do uh, is, is synthesize some of this information, show you both the raw information and the somewhat organized, like we could put all the technology things, pieces together with the subcategories, as you're saying, subject to future discussion. So number four, please. Oh, I'm sorry, I see two raised hands. Number one. Uh, Vice Chair, I just had a suggestion on the on how to present this so that we could um, go down the line. Uh, it'll be easier. Uh, for um, column D, E, F, G, H, can we have um, one, two, three, four, five? And then as we go through, we'll just check, you know, for example, the first one is one and five. We just check one and five. And then later on, when we start getting uh, down to the eighties, then we could at least scan through to see what are the ones. That, that's a excellent idea. Maybe confirmation bias. I was thinking of the same thing. For the time being, because of the size of the screen here, would you mind hiding column C? And then having in, you know, just uh, uh, put like a, a one or yeah, one, two, three, four, and then we can just put a an X or a, a something, a one or a zero. So put a one right there and then zero, zero. Yeah, that kind of thing. Remember Wong, do you have a preference whether it's X's or zeros or whatever? Oh, I shook my head, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm watching the sheet and the panelist list, so it's kind of harder to see your face right now. Uh, using a one will allow us to kind of sum them up later easily to see how many are in one, two, three, four, so. I think you could do a count too. Okay, that's fine, thanks. Perfect, I think we're now to number four. Four. I don't think, yeah, this is new. So if you could read that and get confirmation from the group. Okay, so there's kind of a lot packed in here. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Member McFarland, did you have a pending question or that was from it, before? It, more of a comment, just wondering if we should use this to kind of combine some of the rows as we're gonna undoubtedly find ones that are similar or if, if we should wait until we go through each one. I think that let's, if, if we, can go through each of them. It'll give us a an opportunity to revisit what's been said. I do feel like we should probably do a mapping to combine, but also keep the raw data so that people can hold that combination process uh, honest and accountable. Member Schaefer. Yes, I just wanted to uh, remind folks or maybe bring it up that we do have a, 
uh, synthesis um, ad hoc committee uh, that once we started making recommendations would work to uh, synthesize this and bring it back to the group. Um, so maybe before we end this evening, we can uh, clarify who's on that committee and um, and make sure that that happens. And maybe that, that can happen um, during some of that work and anybody who wants to join on at this point, maybe a second pass for adding to that ad hoc, if that's possible at this point. But just a reminder there that we do have a space set aside to do that kind of um, uh, synthesizing work. So without answering that exact question right now, I'll pass it to city attorney for contemplation and we'll address that toward the end of the meeting, whether we can on the fly add some members or whether that would require some sort of action. No answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I quickly say, uh, Member Schaefer, it was a proposal two to three meetings ago that I made and I withdrew it. So there currently is not an ad hoc committee that is going to synthesize our final recommendation. And if you would like to propose that, then we can put that on the action committee for our next meeting. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Okay, number four. Okay, number four, uh, diversify the definition of public safety. Um, in other words, enable others to do historically police department work. For example, animal control, traffic tickets, homeless outreach, uh, property crime. And this is just tying to, um, it says C uh, downtown ambassadors. So similar kind of uh, intent here. And council directives one, two, and five. And maybe four. Member yeah. Chandler. Yeah, I just, I wanted to say, I don't think that um, trying the definition of public safety is analogous. I think it's more than that. I think it's recognizing that other work in this city um, is about safety. The police don't hold the domain of what is safety work. So for example, roads and fire and mental health services, social services, all those things are about safety. Um, and so I think, and, and should be considered for funding whether or not they're doing work that was historically under the domain of policing. Are you suggesting a different, that this be grouped into a different priority or that we, no. No, we describe the idea? I'm just, I'm suggesting that the idea has been sort of uh, reduced inappropriately. The definition that's, so diversifying, diverse, it says diver, diversify definition of public safety dash enable others to do historically police department work. What I don't know is, does that mean that enabling others to do historically police department work is being equated with diversifying the definition or is that just one example of ways that we could di diversify public safety? Um, is, there, I, is there a clarification that you would like to add there? Yes, I would like to add that. <laughs> so I just <clears throat> breathed wrong. That um, I, I just, I think that that modifier should be a separate line. So <laughs> just to, to better understand, I think you're saying we would insert a row. One yes. row would be would be literally define or diversify the definition of public safety and a separate line would be enable others to do what's written there. Yeah, and actually, yes. And um, I think diversified definition of public safety would is, it's not actually definition of public safety. I think it's literally diversify our public safety funding. That was, uh, this was actually member Schaefer. Okay. Who did then this? I um, so maybe Member Shaper can um, okay. clarify what he meant. Yes, and I, I would agree with that. That that would be. Um, I think definition muddies it a little bit. I think diversify uh, our our public safety spending would be the most direct um, way to to phrase that. Thank you. Member Shaper, is that different than 
diversify our public safety portfolio? Same thing, and it's very high level. So, right, um, and you could, you know, you can interpret that in kind of the reimagined public safety, uh, if you if you want. But um, I think that's more specifically in regards to budget, diversify our public safety portfolio, our public space spending. E either way, but yeah, that's that's the idea. Okay. Would it be appropriate to put a slash? Uh, so, diversify public safety spending slash portfolio. Is that sure we did have that and i thought that there, there was some angst about that we did have it and it, i think the it depends on how you read it right because portfolio because when you say diversify your portfolio just that implies actually that you're spreading out to other things um but and and that's the context all, which is yeah you're all happy with it that's fine Okay, so then going back to, and just uh, one quick trick on your numbering, and we don't have to renumber right now by any means. Yeah, just, no, to just do like one plus that kind of thing that'll help you out. Okay, so here we go. So on the new number four, enable others to do historically police department work, such as animal control, traffic tickets, addressing homelessness, property crime, I think that was property crime reporting, if I remember correctly, and the downtown ambassadors. Um, it is currently mapped to, this is a community priority. This is a budget balancing strategy, and it is a strategy for long-term sustainability. And I can't, hold on just a second. And someone suggested also that it's it's uh, provides us guidance for reallocating the 1.7 million. Yeah. Uh, Member Offenberg. Uh, thank you. I wanna say I support both of these, but to be fair, I am not sure that we can really count them as community priorities. Would you like to elaborate on your concern? Yeah, I think um, most of the polls and votes and, you know, the people think that the police department, public safety is the most important thing. Um, and so I'm not actually sure that this would be, although I personally support it, I'm not exactly sure that our city residents would consider this to be a community priority. All the other things I agree with. Okay, uh, member or chair de Rodriguez. Um, member Offenberg, um, I appreciate your comment. I think um, as a member of the community and uh, being uh, privileged to be here and chosen as a representative of the community, I think, um, and also knowing that there, we're going to be able to solicit additional information from the community is important to do our town hall. I think we represent the community, something to consider. And I also believe that the, the um, and I think the survey had people uh, prioritizing, prioritizing public safety. And so I think when I think of public safety, uh, police is one strategy for that, but it's not the only strategy. So in regards to public safety and community input on making that a priority, um, I would encourage us to think outside of the context of um, police being the primary um, current strategy when addressing public safety. So at this point in time, I think our objective is to perhaps develop a superset of ideas and that we will have the opportunity to explore. So much in the spirit of brainstorming, I'd encourage us to go through and make uh, an, uh, an assessment, a recommendation, and then we will have an opportunity to say, well, you know, as a group, we don't feel that this addresses this particular directive. So I, I would recommend that we focus on just, does somebody think that this rightfully falls in this category? Just from a process perspective, we will have plenty of time to vote. Uh, 
I think Mr. Prola was next. Member Prola. You're going to talk, I'm talking. I agree with Mr. Offenberg. Uh, every poll that we've ever taken, when we've taken a reputable poll of hundreds of people, not just 28, uh, shows that it is not a community priority that public safety was. And if she would look back at the poll that was in 2019, she would see that um, public safety has always been high. In the last recession, it was the highest by far. And when we sold the sales tax measure, uh, it was way up there. That's how we helped sell it. So it's obviously not a community priority. It may be a priority of this committee, but it definitely is not a community priority. So I think I, I, to my suggestion that this process is a brainstorming process where we'll flag what it gets to um, we at least one person. I'm sorry, can people this. mute? Thank you, I'm sorry. Um, Vice Chair, I was having a hard time hearing you. People weren't muted. Go ahead. Yeah, so at this point in time, I think our process is to capture ideas. There will come a time where these uh, disagreements can be vocalized and voted upon. But part of what we're trying to do in this process is assess whether we've actually addressed each of these questions and whether some questions need some additional thought or whether we have an abundance of ideas on certain, on certain items because that might guide whether we choose to set up subcommittees or how we allocate time to discuss these items. So as a process matter, let's first go through and identify where we think these map to, at least some people think that it maps and then go back to having a, an exploration, a discussion as to whether we, whether we feel that is accurate. Item number five. Diversify public safety. I'm sorry, uh, member Bailey, your hand is up. I'm assuming you have a comment or is that inadvertent? Um, no, it's not inadvertent. Um, I think um, I, want, I want to get through the list just like, you, like everybody else does. Um, I think you said something at the end, which I think is important, is if anybody in this group thinks that a particular goal number should be associated with a line item, that's what we should start with. We can hash out later whether that should change. But the conversation we started to have just now really kind of gets to the core of who we think we are and what created this task force to begin with. And it certainly was a response to um, some, certainly, elements of the community. So to ignore that and, and pretend that we only have to go by past surveys um, is nonsense, in my opinion. Sorry. So I would encourage each of the members, because I can, I sense some frustrations in the room to remain focused on our objective here. Our objective here, and it's getting later into the evening. So if, if we need to adjourn a little bit early, we can do that if people are getting tired. Uh, our objective at this point, we've got five meetings left. I think we got plenty of time. Right now, we're just trying to get the big picture into place of what some people believe to be correct. We will then go back and further explore. So if we could please proceed with item number five, Assistant City Manager. Sure. Uh, diversify public safety spending. And we have a one, a two, a four, and a five. Okay, member, Chamberlain, I see your hand. You're sorry, still muted. I had to find the mute button, sorry. Would it be unrealistic to maybe have you and a couple others put this all in category? Because I know, wasn't there like 80 or 90? And then maybe come back to it at our next meeting and see where, send it to us, see where everything is at, and then maybe we can all do our notes or do we have to go through the... How many line items was there, uh, Ms. Liz? Approximately 70, I think, or 80, 90. 91. Uh, it's just a thought if maybe. Yeah, I mean, I started. Has an opinion, everyone's going to, it's going to be 91 interruptions. Just, just a thought. Can I add something just very quickly? I just want to thank you, uh, Member Chamberlain. I, I want to reaffirm what Vice Chair Gonzalez had um, talked about. And I think, um, 
I simplify it in my head and maybe that's why, how I get through it in my head uh, with this list. It's just saying who and what um, people like um, member Gonzalez, uh, chair Gonzalez, vice chair Gonzalez was saying, if there's someone here who believes it's connected to one of those five, say it. And then we're moving on to the next one. So we're just trying to categorically through this list, see which one of the five they are. Um, and maybe it's taken a little bit of a slow start because it's new process for us as a group and we're kind of maybe varying and I'm guilty of that, varying off course. But I think the objective of this conversation for the next 20 minutes is to just, which ones do these hit? These hit one, two, three, four, five. Okay, next, one, two, three, four. It's not you justifying why it hits any of those. It's just making sure we have a note about it. And so if we can just do it that way, um, I think that's what we're trying to move through. And it is a process. There's 28, 26. I understand that, but it just doesn't seem to be doing that. So right, so, I, and, and I. Quiet, okay. No, no, I don't want you to be quiet, but I understand your frustration because it's taking a little while for us to get the balance we want, I think. No, no I'm not frustrated. I just. Well, I am. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a process, right? And so I would just encourage us to, to stay, stay the course and to really try to. It was um, just an option. It was. Yes. To, and with the meetings like this, when we make um, decisions or summaries, we want to make it in the public. We have to do it in a public way. And if we had an ad hoc committee who was tasked with a certain directive from this group at large, this group, um, then they can do that. Um, so that's something to consider for next meeting. Um, uh, Member Schaefer brought it up, and you're bringing it up as well, Member Chandler uh, Chamberlain. If we want to um, think about an ad hoc committee. Um, distilling this in a way that would be a little bit more succinct. So I think this is something that's come up twice. So that's probably a strategy to consider. But I think um, if we can just stay the course for 19 more minutes to see how many we can get through, we can reconsider and see whether or not this is going to be a fruitful way to get through them all. That's all. I'll stop talking now. Yeah, and so what, what I would encourage is let's, let's have a very specific goal because we, we would like to set aside just a few minutes at the end for a member a comment, and if there are any motions, recommendations for agenda items. So can I suggest that we try to get through, let's say 20 more, 25 more, just as an objective. And if we're making good pace, we can proceed, but we're not gonna get through the whole list tonight. And that'll also give us some time to just kind of uh, reconnect and, and self-evaluate. If we could quickly go to number six then. Okay, eliminate public relations in the police department. We have this as um, oops, uh, one, two, and five. Would anyone like to add an additional category, either category three or four? And just out of the sake of efficiency, just speak out, please. Yeah, Not, if well, I don't I'll, hear anything, I'll just, I move on. I'll just say one thing. It, it seems to me that a lot of the things that are budget balancing strategies are also going to be stat strategies for long term sustainability. And so um, that's one comment there. Um, that's that's my comment. And so, yeah, I think it's I think it's both of those things. I mean, yeah. I'm probably anything that says budget balancing strategies. I'm probably also going to think that it's a strategy for long term uh, sustainability. Thank you. Uh, item number seven, create citizens oversight over police and I guess, and police reform. Correct. I'd add five. Or over the reform process. I'd add five. I'd add four. Thank you. I've heard one, four, and five. Hearing nothing else, number eight. Use of safety liaison, uh, conflict resolution. This is similar to the ambassadors. We can kind of combine all these when we get to it. Uh, this was one. Add four, please. Add five. Hearing nothing else, number nine. Permanent navigation center, uh, maybe temporary to begin with, um, which would include homelessness, um, mental health, potentially domestic violence. Um, this was one and four.
Hearing nothing else, number 10. Have Rec and Human Services and Library be part of the Navigation Center and other services similar to a uh, community service officer? This was one and four. Hearing nothing else, 11. Okay, uh, the police department should focus on serious crime. Add two and five. And four. Okay. Number 12, please. Shift PD dollars to the future generation. I think this one was equivalent to item number four. So it was my intent. Okay. All right. Shall I take that out? Yeah, you could. Okay. Was Generation. it only, well, I'm sorry, was it only member Wong that had offered that one? No, yes. Lum. I'm sorry, Lum, my apologies. Was it only member Lum? Well, my intent, this, I'm sorry. I'm my sorry. intent was to shift some of, was to be able to have other departments, the lower cost departments handle some of those um, functions. Underst uh, understood. Does anybody object to its removal? Sorry. Hearing no objections, let's remove it. Okay, moving on. Generate tax revenue by beefing up community development um, it's actually, uh, and also economic development. And this was two and five. Okay, uh, partnership with nonprofits. This was two and five. Okay. Um, Possibly four. Possibly one. Okay, um, more training on de-escalation. Five. Four. Five. Did I hear that correctly? One, four, and five? And Thank two. You. Okay. And two. And two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the next one is take the smallest library and use it as a homeless center. Um, this was also, I added in here, and maybe this needs to be separate, but a discussion about bookmobiles, paratransit to the library, um, and there was a comment about the Mulford Marina, that there's new money that's going to be spent to uh, rehabilitate that uh, library and instead maybe use that for uh, homelessness. And two. Five. Number 17. Uh, more implicit bias training. Five. Four possibly. If you can enter under number one as well. Yes, please. 18. Okay. Uh, financial software update. Uh, so all departments can run reports and compare budget to actuals consistently. Uh, this was a two and five. Okay, grant writer. Okay, grant writer, yep, two and five. 
Number 20. Okay, public information uh, slash outreach, find better ways to communicate with the public. Not everyone gets their information online, use of things like San Leandro Times, flyers, et cetera. Potentially three. Three. Okay, volunteer coordinator, two and five. Three as well. Four and one. I think it goes all, all the way. Okay. Partnering uh, with uh, non governmental organizations and local businesses with expertise that can help the city be more financially efficient. Assuming that's two and five. Just a suggestion that this might have overlap with um, line 25 partnership with nonprofits. Yep. If we can just write a note to the side, perhaps. So that was one in five. I'm sorry, that was two in five. I'm or partnering two. with NGOs. Yep, sorry. Okay, item 23. Okay, funding for sustainability efforts. Uh, that is one for sure and open for five. Five. Two. Funding support for citywide maintenance. And five. And two. One. Good. Wouldn't that also funding? be uh, four? I'm sorry, for the maintenance? Okay, more funding for the library. Four. It's cur One. currently a city private. Go ahead. Four. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I heard one in four. Who else? Two. Okay. Number 26, please. More funding for mental health and human services, uh, and also consider cost sharing with other cities. That could be two separate things, but one and four. And five. Two. Economic development through grant writing. That's repeated for item 19. Item 19. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. This might fall into one of those subcategory, uh, you know, how we're talking about maybe categorizing technology and the different uses. So just food for thought for a later possible grouping. Okay. So yeah, I think maybe specifically for economic development. So two and five. Can I make a recommendation that um, the column after five be used for related to type uh, purposes? So you could just note um, sure. item 19. You could just say 19 in there and then Yep. We could just, we don't have to delete them. We can just. Uh... Sure. Thank you. Number 28, please. Create focus groups with specific objectives to solicit input. Three. 
That's definitely true. Number 29, five. please. Oh, five. I think one also, community priorities. No. Twenty nine, please. Okay, training for residents to tackle certain projects and issues. For example, how do we clean up the parks? Three and add five. One. And I would say related to volunteer coordinator. Uh, Twenty one. Okay, and our final one for the evening. Okay, number find, ways, uh, number three, find ways to get community involved on a more ongoing and consistent basis. And this is uh, community engagement. 23. And one. And five. Five. Okay. And related to 29. Thank you, Assistant City Manager. I know it's, uh, Certainly. it's a difficult task to be taking all that input and doing it on the fly in front of everybody. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep, no worries. Uh, staying true to our schedule and respecting people's time allocation for today. Um, we're going to move on to task force member comments and Mr. Schaefer, Member Schaefer, if in this time period you wanted to make a motion for an agenda item, we could uh, would definitely entertain it at this point in time, but I will begin with Mr. Prola, who had identified before and just kind of confirmed that you have something that you'd like to comment on. Yes, um, I'd like to comment on, um, in Council District 6, a promise that was made to us uh, when a lot of the Marina Fair, Marina Mess, Marina Gardens, Mulford Gardens, homeowners associations were sold um, on the the development of the marina was that the marina Mulford library would be improved. And since there's a school a half a block away, Garfield, and since there's a lot of seniors in our area that don't drive, and there's no public transportation to the closest library, that which is um, Manor, um, I do believe that that library is absolutely crucial uh, to the largest council district in town. So that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Member Sheridan. Yeah, I would just like to make a comment to uh, reiterate my comments earlier on seeking greater community input regarding changes to the budget to the police department, reforming, reimagining the police department. Um, while there's, there may be some hesitancy to look at past polls to look at the 64% of voters that chose to pass a sales tax measure specifically to maintain uh, 911 call times and increase patrolling. Um, more recently, I mean, you, there's a poll on uh, social media, it looks like someone ran it yesterday, uh, which specifically asks, should we defund the police? to fund social programs or sh no, should we not defund, social, uh, defund the police and, or actually it says cut their budget and reallocate those funds to social programs. Should we find alternative sources? This was created a day ago. It's got 92 votes and 70% of the community said, of the respondents, it's a small sampling said no, find alternative uh, funding. 23% said yes, and 8% were undecided. So we, uh, that just reiterates my point that I think we need to seek broader input on uh, this topic. And that's it for my comments, thank you. Member Schaefer. Yes, I would like uh, two, two things. First, I just have to respond to that. A social media poll is not scientific polling. Um, so that just has to be thrown out there. I'm, um, but uh, the main thing that I wanna um, uh, 
uh, and if we're going for data, we got to talk about real data and not something that's unscientific. So when I when I mention data, I'm not throwing it in with something like that. So uh, divest myself from that uh, sort of data. Um, second part is I would like to propose that we have a um, uh, that we have a ad hoc uh, uh, committee um, dedicated to summarizing and synthesizing um, uh, these uh, suggestions um, that could bring these back to the committee. So maybe we can make uh, uh, put that on the agenda for next time to, to vote on that. As a matter of process, and I'll re reach out to Chair Rodriguez. Is there any, Dave Rodriguez? Is there any need for a second on the request for adding something to the agenda? No. Okay. So the note has been taken, Member Schaefer. I am currently not seeing any other raised hands from Member. Okay, Member Chandler. I hope this is the right time to ask this, but um, I'm wondering if we could make a, if we could dedicate this meeting to uh, Chair De Rodriguez's sister, older sister who passed away this week um, in recognition of the fact that, uh, you know, her even facilitating our conversation yesterday and being part, so actively part of this conversation today when she just suffered such a tremendous loss is such an incredible gift to our community that I think it would be a beautiful thing for us to really honor her and her family and her sister's passing by dedicating this meeting to Amelia Maria Rodriguez. Well, it is the perfect time to do that. I appreciate you offering that. At this time, we are, at this just, time, I'm sorry, uh, Assistant Manager Warmadam, was that you? No, it was um, Rebecca, actually. Rebecca. So I just wanted to thank you very much, and she would have loved it. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in there, for maintaining professional decorum, for being awesome people, for adding to the process. I know it's a long slog, but once we get on a roll, this committee really does work very efficiently. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we look forward to meeting again with you soon per our agenda. Everybody have a wonderful evening. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.